So on today's shoot, I get a little carried away. In most of my tutorials, check my playlist linked in the description below if you haven't seen them, I'm always trying to have a simple one light solution that anyone could do. But sometimes I get my hands on a new piece of kit and I just wanna play. And that's what happened here. But don't worry, no person will be left behind. There are many takeaways that this video will help you level up your lighting from the grip I use to why I use certain light shapers in a particular way. My inspiration for this shoot is reflections. The lighting I use in this video is a mix of different times I've seen light bouncing off windows, a pool of water, or a chrome doll motorcycle. And I ask myself, how would I recreate these effects in the studio? Overall, the look of being underwater dominated the scene, so it had the greatest effect on what I do later in post. I was also able to get my hands on the Nanlite 720 and 720B lights. Now let me give you a quick overview of the set before I take you on a deep dive into the lighting. I'm using four lights. I'm using an eight foot Nanlite Pavo tube as an accent light. I'm using a Nanlite projection attachment with a 36 degree spotlight attachment as an edge light. I'm using another Nanlite 720 with a Fresnel attachment as my main light. Then I'm rounding it out with a Forza 500 as my fill light. And then all of these lights are being bounced back into a reflective wall made of my own funhouse style mirrors and mylar. So now let's take a deep dive. I put our model up on a stage made from apple boxes, then covered with two V-flats to spread out the weight and a piece of plastic called Sintra. Okay, pause. Sintra, or HDPE, High Density Polyethylene or Expanded PVC Board, is a great, easy to clean, high traffic matte gloss surface purchasable in four by eight sheets that you can use as an alternative to Plexi when creating stages or if you want an easy to clean surface for still photography. I know you are gonna ask, so now back to our show. I used the stage to create a horizon that I could light by sneaking in an eight foot Pavel tube. If I was using strobes, this effect wouldn't be nearly as easy to execute and have the lighting be this even. This effect alone could make me go with constant lights over strobes on this shoot. Now let's talk about our edge light. I want to give our model an edge light, but not have it spill on the background. Okay, pause again. If you walk away with one thing from this video, it's this. Spotlights solve so many problems. I have a collection of spotlights ranging from $12,000 inline strobes, some of my own custom builds, to a bunch of classics that have been discontinued over the years. Lindsay Adler even designed one. Check it out on this channel too. When you wanna level up, needless to say, they hit the spot. Sorry for the interruption, now back to our show. In this shot, having an edge light far out of frame that would give you zero spill on the background and still evenly color half of our model could easily only be done using a spot. And this one with the built-in leafs to cut the edge of the light was perfect. For my main light, I'm using a Fresnel on a Nanlite 720. It's giving me my primary reflections coming from the mirrors and mylar. I'm using a Fresnel to focus the light over my head when I'm shooting and eliminate it from directly hitting our model for the most part. If I had to only use one light on this shoot, it would be this one. The light I get from it bouncing off the mirrors is what's really lighting our model, as seen in this still with only the Fresnel turned on. I then use an additional Fresnel at a different angle, which gives me a bit of fill coming from the Mylar and additional sharp reflections on the background from the mirrors. I have two mirrors I'm using, both made from plastic. I'm bending one of them using gaff tape and another using a nylon strap. It gives me a funhouse effect and it gives me these shards of light as reflections. Here I'm swinging the mylar out of the way so you can see the effects just the mirrors have on our background. I also swivel them to control the rays of light hitting our model and I can easily direct her in and out of them as well. So my mirrors are the foundation of my lighting but then the mylar really acts to fill in all the gaps and give me more of the underwater effect. I use a large clean roll for the large ripples and a small crinkled roll for the tighter ripples. Here you can see the effect I get from the mylar as I swing it into the shot, adding to the reflections we get from the mirrors. I also have a fan on very low power in order to help the mylar move. I feel like this kind of sets the stage and it gives me a little bit more irregularity with the mylar itself versus if I just had it standing still. So when talking about our inspiration for the shot, 
The mirrors represent the light I see being reflected from windows, chrome objects, and the mylar gives me the effect of water. Now the grip I use for this video is very important. First, for all the mirrors and reflectors, I'm using C-stands. Why? Because the turtle bases allow them to be close to one another and not be inhibited by a mess of legs you find on a traditional light stand with a wider base. I'm using a C-stand for this edge light as well because it allows me to tuck it in right next to my background stand. I'm also using another C-stand for this light that I'm kind of shooting next to so I don't have very long legs to contend with. I'm using a rolling stand for my main light. It has a wider base, so I'm more comfortable with it up high and still moving it around to get it dialed in. To hold the mirrors in place, I'm using Kupo supervisor clamps with a grip head. I would recommend having someone hold the mirror if you want to move the stand around for added safety. And for the Mylar, I'm using a grip head with an arm to hang each sheet. When shooting with constant lights, it even helps to have a camera with a good high ISO as well as image stabilization. For this shoot, I'm using the GFX 100S. The higher ISOs will enable you to use higher shutter speeds to freeze any of your model's movements and the image stabilization reduces the risk of camera shake. Also, a camera with a file with higher dynamic range gives you more room in post to dial in the color grade to really drive home the creative effect. I love the GFX because of the 100 megapixel file and the less rectangular format compared to 35 millimeter. But the best camera is the one you have. Okay. So why would we want to shoot with constant light versus strobes? The first reason is if you are shooting a combination of both video and still images and want a better visual match. Constant lights, like these NAND lights, are going to give me way more power than just using a modeling light. Another reason is if you have to shoot stills on the same set while a video shoot is actively going on, it's easier to contain constant lights so that they don't affect the lighting in another part of the room. And if they do, it's constant versus seeing small flashes creeping into your shot. Flash is so bright, even if you try to block them, they can easily still be seen as they bounce around. Another reason is to be able to shoot high frame rates that you can pull stills from if you're going to have something moving ridiculously fast. And a quick tip, if you want to pull stills from an image, either raise your shutter speed or decrease your shutter angle. This will decrease the amount of blur you get when pulling stills from video. Why light like this? One of the huge benefits about learning lighting is that with no props, you can completely transform a space. And within moments, you can completely transform the look of an image without needing to change locations or sets. And if you are ever in a situation in which you only have constant lights available, it's to your benefit to have experience using them. So on a shoot like this, it's all about experimentation for me. But the top things I would want you to take away are one, use non-traditional reflectors. If it can bounce light, see if it has a benefit for your style. Two, spotlights make great edge lights, especially when your subject is really close to backgrounds. Three, light is light. Learn the benefit of both constant lights and strobes. Leveling up your lighting is about being able to use anything in a pinch. Four, break the rules, or better yet, create your own. Let your boundaries be created by your vision because not everyone is gonna see things on your level. And you may just wanna remind them, there's levels to this. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and ring that bell so you can see content just like this on Adorama TV. And when I mean comment, I really mean comment. Every week I go in and my goal is to answer every single comment that I see you guys leave on this video and past videos that I've done. I love hearing your feedback and also ideas on other shows or topics you'd like me to cover. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful for your participation and the fact that you guys made it this far. I'll see you next time.